Hey everybody, how's it going? Alan here. This is the Gibson Garage YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be diagnosing the no start condition on my truck here. Cranking and cranking and cranking and no luck. So um, I already went through a couple of the tests and I do believe it's the fuel pump. I'm not 100% certain yet. I will go through the wiring diagram and show you what I was looking for and what you can look for too. Also, I gotta throw in there, you wanna support the channel, please hit that super thanks button. I wanna get that lift up in the back. And I, and, and I gotta say thank you again, guys, so much. I am at about 4,000 subscribers already. It wasn't even like two months ago, I had just barely reached three. Now I'm already at four. And it seems you guys are really digging the work I'm doing on my personal stuff, like my truck and my Magnum out there. So I'm, I'm seeing that, and I'm going to stay on it. I'm going to keep getting stuff. I've got headers over there I need to put on the Magnum. You guys are going to dig that. I've got new coilovers I want to put on there because those pink Godspeeds are junk. But I need help. I need help as always. Everybody needs a little bit of help. Hit that super thanks button, guys, and share the video. Like the video. That all helps. All of it helps. Comment. Um, anything, anything you can think of. Okay, so the first, probably first two most common obvious things you can look for is just listening to a couple things. The first one you're going to listen to is just the hum of your fuel pump priming to begin with. As soon as you kick the key all the way forward, the fuel pump is supposed to prime for 10 seconds. In which you would hear a whirring down here. which I do not, right? Didn't happen. Another thing you can listen for is the relay. Let me turn it back off. You gotta wait like three seconds before you can just do it again and have that prime relay work again. A couple things kick on when you first turn the key, so it's kind of hard, but the thing you're gonna be looking for is the relay clicking again 10 seconds later, clicking off. Okay. That was something down here clicking. This is your fuel pump relay. There, just kick clicked off. That was the prime thing, doing its thing, trying to make it prime. And then you'd be able to start the car. So right away, I'm kind of thinking, all right, I don't hear the fuel pump whirring, but I do hear the relay clicking. It's gotta be a fuel pump, right? Maybe, probably. I'm not 100% sure on that, to be honest. There is what's called an oil pressure cutoff switch in here. The thing I'm not sure about is what exactly it cuts off. So because I had tried unplugging the oil pressure switch, like to simulate that it wasn't working, and the relay still clicks. It still it still clicks and uh, you know tries to prime for 10 seconds. So the disconnect isn't there. The disconnect is somewhere else at the. It's actually separate from the oil pressure switch, it looks like. Let me show you. And then the next obvious thing you want to check is, of course, the fuse. Now, in the wiring diagram, these wires are supposed to be orange, just like this orange wire here, because this is the power wire that's hot all times, and this is the wire that's supposedly cut when this fuse blows, according to the wiring diagram. Now, if you pull this fuse out, or if it's bad, you don't get the click. Okay, I was wrong. Okay, hang in there with me, guys. We'll get back to this fuse in a minute. I think I've got a way to explain that. But before I pull these out of here, I already have this set up. I wanted to show you how to check for your pulse and make sure it's not your injectors real quick. Now, if you're looking and you're turning and you're looking and you're not seeing a squirt, you might think, well, maybe it's injectors. So let's, here's something you can check. I'll turn the key to crank it, and you should see the white light blinking. Now, I hope you guys saw that because it's an LED and it blinks really fast and frame rate and all that, but white light's totally blinking. This is just, this yellow one is just something metal I could st stick in there to clamp onto. Uh, you could use a nail or an ice pick or whatever. But I'm getting signal to the injector and 
Uh, funny thing is, too, you can also hear it click. You can hear the injector click as you roll this back and forth. You can hear the spark jumping in there. Yep, I think you guys caught that one. So, injectors are working. Or at least the signal to the injectors are working. But it's not likely they're both going to fail on you at the same time. But again, you heard the injector clicking as I rotated the cap. So that's how to go past just checking for signal. You check to make sure the uh, injector is actually clicking just by turning the cap. Okay, now you can just jump some leads to it too in case you're still not 100% convinced. Listen. So injectors are pulsing. So something weird i don't know maybe i'm lucky because they went to the gray wires instead of the orange wires because we can make sure right here this is almost like our test lead that we're missing because these are the gray wires that are going directly or gray wire that's going directly to the pump so like i said my truck's an early 94 so maybe this is before they switched to uh fusing the relay with the orange wire I don't know, but it gives us an opportunity to make sure we're getting an easy place to make sure we're getting 12 volts all the way back to the to the uh, fuel pump. We'll just set up our own meter here, and when I click on the key, we should get 12 volts out of both prongs, um, ensuring that the 12 volts is going actually all the way through, hopefully. Here we go. Turn it off for a sec. All right, going on. Rush over here. We'll touch this. 12 and a half, or 12.3, 12.3. And then you saw it turn off there. Oh, right before I let go, you heard the click and you saw the voltage drop. So I am curious about something. Let me unplug the oil pressure sensor that also that has a gray wire to it and it's supposed to cut power to the gray wire if your oil pressure sensor goes bad for safety or I think if it reads low I guess I don't know. let's see we'll turn it off okay on I'm running back and oh where's my wire I'm gonna touch it. It's still getting 12.3 volts. Do you see that? With the oil pressure sensor unplugged. Curiosity start. No dice. What's this little little purple gem over here? This sound I think you lost a drive line or something you joint it's moving okay recap what do we know we know we've got good voltage on the battery of course that's a big deal we know the relays clicking we know that the injectors are working there's power to the injectors and the injectors are working we know there's power to the fuse, and the fuse is good. So I'm wondering if that is supposed to be that fuse, uh, the gray wire with the fuse in it, is supposed to be my fuel pump test lead that the book is talking about. Because it says it's supposed to be a red wire down here. Okay, so here's your fuel presser switch that sits right behind the distributor, the three wire switch. Here's the relay that's right there. Here is the fuel pump that's obviously in the tank now we follow this gray wire and that also goes to the fuel pump and it also is shared with the relay and that's the main power to the pump is the gray wire it's the only wire going back there it looks like and then it'll be a black and white one grounding it out 
Now this fuel pressure switch is what's supposed to be the one, you know, cutting it off if this goes bad. It's supposed to be hot at all times. The orange wire, and it is, if we follow it up, it also has an orange wire that goes to the relay. That'll be hot all the time. That's this wire right here that's orange. That has that has 12 volts to it. And then it's also supposed to go over to underhood fuse relay center. That 20 amp fuse that we were messing with is supposed to be this orange wire that is sending power to the pressure switch and the relay, but they put the relay in the gray wire that's after all of that. And the only other place that gray wire goes besides the fuse is all the way back to the ECM. So that could be where I could put power into to try to force the pump to run but it wouldn't really confirm anything if I put power to it and it didn't run it wouldn't really confirm anything for me right now because of the discrepancy between the orange and gray thing but um, so that could mean that there's something else between that fuse and the pump that is stopping the power so now we know the power is getting to that gray wire. We need to make sure it's getting all the way back to the pump. So now I got to jack this side up and crawl underneath there. And because the tank is almost empty, also another reason it kind of leads me to believe that the fuel pump locked up. Because it's almost pretty much empty, I'm going to drop the tank and not lift the bed. All right, so I've already loosened or actually took out the three tiny little bolts on the water neck. So I'm just going to let the whole water neck, water neck, filler neck assembly just come down with it, hopefully. I was right, it was a fuel pump. Look what I found. Pulled the connector down and it wasn't bolted. And this ground wire isn't bolted up either. Okay, so since I found that ground wire, I'm pretty sure that was the problem. So I went ahead and lowered everything back down on the ground. So this will be, if this starts, this will be the first start since I've had it all taken apart, done all the suspension, all those videos ago. Okay, here we go. I see squirting. I saw fuel squirting. Oh man. Okay, here we go. It's gonna fire. I'm scared to death. there it is that's super exciting i thought i was gonna have to drop more money on this thing uh, and would i have found that you know the night before i wouldn't even have tried the night before the uh, gold rush car show i'd have been like i don't know i probably would have given up who knows <laughs> but anyway that is how you diagnose 
a no start or at least the uh, fuel side of things on, on one of these trucks specifically. That's how you diagnose every part of the fuel side of things. Now you see fuel squirting into the uh, throttle body. You obviously right away, you know that's not the problem and it's still not starting. Well then obviously it's spark, right? It's not air, can't be air. I guess it could be air if there was like huge vacuum leaks, but. So there's, there's a few things that sparks a lot simpler. There's really only a couple things you gotta check. That's going to be this coil and the ignition control module that sits underneath the cap where these wires go to. Make sure those wires are all plugged in, of course, and they're not corroded because one goes here and whatever. Uh, you can have both of these tested at your AutoZone or your O'Reilly's and um, also make sure that if you do replace that ignition control module, you definitely use that cooling lubricant that's supposed to go into there. That's, that's pretty important. And then you've got the inline tester, of course, you can put in here to make sure first that it just has a little, like a little light bulb. If you're getting spark, it'll blink. If you're not getting spark, it won't blink. You probably want to check more than one just to verify. But then you're looking at testing those or you're looking at replacing your cap and rotor for corrosion. Now say all that's brand new, your plugs, wires, all those are brand new and you still don't have spark. It's got to be the actual distributor in here, the pickup coil. Now this is a 30 year old truck guys. These trucks are super old now. There's a winding of coil in there just like there's a winding of coil in your alternator. And, and actually this one had some like dirt or debris in there. And, um, you know, I don't, it obviously wasn't a problem before, but it could have, it could have been a problem in the future. Uh, you'll want to get in there and make sure that that coil is still clean and copper colored, blow anything out. And when you're spinning that coil in there, there's magnets. It should actually click, feel like it's clicking anyways. It won't make a physical clicking sound, but it's the magnets lining up as you're trying to spin the distributor inside the housing. So make sure that feels nice and strong. If you can spin it and it just doesn't feel like any magnets are catching it at all, the distributor's bad or it needs to be cleaned out, it's corroded, you know. Those are kind of expensive. So those are the things to look for on the spark side. I showed you everything that you can test on the fuel side and that I think covers it. I mean, I don't know what else there could be. If there is something else that I might have left out, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you like this video, hit the like button for me. And uh, if you want to see what's going on next with this, because I got parts in, I got parts in. Yeah, I got to finish up the steering. So hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like button. If you like what I did here, I showed you everything you needed to see. And uh, have a good day, guys. Thanks for watching. Okay guys, I'm editing the video and I realized there's some questions that I felt were unanswered. Two things that I really wanted to try and figure out. One is, will unplugging the oil pressure sensor switch, the oil pressure switch, will unplugging that cut off power to the fuel pump and not let it start? And two, will putting power to that gray fused wire power the pump now that we have it grounded and working? Here, let's make sure we're still running first. It's always a little nerve wracking for some reason. <laughs> Just hold the key, damn it. Okay. Okay, first one, let's unplug this. Oil pressure switch back here. There you can see that it's unplugged sitting there next to the switch. And we'll come over here, see if it starts. Okay, that's interesting. Early 94. 
is when it was manufactured, January of 94, matter of fact. Okay, so I need to find out which uh, wire power is coming from, so I know which wire to put power to. Look for that little light way over there on the battery. Oh, lucky first try, pick the right wire. Get no light, light. Okay, no key on, no power to anything else in the truck. I just want to put direct power to this wire, to this outgoing. See if you can hear a pump, listen. I did hear it, did you hear it? Boom! Okay. I got you right up in here, listen. Listen. Ready? So that is really cool to find out new stuff about your truck you've owned for a very long time or even like you know a, a truck or a, a vehicle at all that you've worked on so much and you felt you knew everything already and still find something new is really cool so if it's the gray wire that can also be a test lead put power to it listen for the hum that's really cool if it's the orange wire putting power to it isn't going to do anything unfortunately that wire is supposed to be hot at all times anyway so it wouldn't wouldn't do anything for you I don't know when that book was printed in relation to like the vehicle so I don't know why there's a discrepancy there I don't know why the con disconnecting the oil pressure switch doesn't turn it off either uh, maybe because the fuse no I got nothing but let me know what you guys think and for the third time in this video peace